number. Oh gosh, I don't even know. Hold on. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, beige green home sunflower kit 142. We're doing it on the ring board, which I haven't even loaded or done anything. Our ring board. So this is an everyday kit. I like doing everyday kits because it, they're great for gifts, especially if, like, if you're going to a pool party and stuff. Um, it's a great hostess gift because everybody loves just like an everyday. So I try to do a, a few everydays when we do the kits. Uh, this one is this one of my favorite signs. It's just a simple home sign that has like a wood background. And of course the O is you know, a laurel wreath uh, for the O. But I have had this ribbon and I really liked it. So I ordered a whole bunch of it so I could make a kit out of it. Um, it's sunflower ribbons. Now everybody loves a sunflower. I don't know why, I know they're bright and vibrant, but I wanted to make a, a kit with the sunflowers not so in your face. So this ribbon, it's a two and a half inch ribbon. It's a royal ribbon. Um, it's got like a ivory kind of background and more of like a vintage print on it. So it's not going to be so in your face and it's going to be just a really pretty background ribbon, I believe. Um, anyways, that is why I use this ribbon. We're going to, even though the sign doesn't have sunflowers in it, we're just going to put that little pop of sunflower with it without it being totally right in your face, okay? So I picked the two and a half inch ribbon, and then I also picked two different one and a half inch ribbons, okay? Because we're staying kind of neutral with adding a little bit of color because when you stay neutral, especially if you're making a gift, it doesn't matter what color the person's door is. It will always match, right? So I brought in um, this one and a half inch that has the uh, moss green, the natural and the brown, which is colors that I pulled out from the sunflower ribbon. And then I like to add a pop of just solid. So I put in a one and a half inch solid uh, moss green or fern green. I can't even remember what they're called. Oh, it doesn't even say on there. Anyways, it's the same, the greens are like, the same greens that I pulled out from the ribbon and the home sign of course it'll match anything and then I have paired it with just a simple natural poly jute uh, for the mesh that we're going to use okay so it's a really um, it's going to be really pretty I think um, and we're going to get started so now what I've done I'm going to use this whole roll because I have like half rolls all over the place. So what I've decided is I'm going to use 16 pieces. So I divided 16 into 360, which is how much is on the roll. And we got 22 in 22.5 inches. So I'm cutting all my mesh, the whole roll, I'm cutting at 22 inches. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's a little sore. I went to a pool party yesterday. I laughed and laughed. Oh my gosh, I haven't laughed like that in a long time, but I laughed so much that my throat and my chest and my mouth hurts from laughing. It was just so much fun. Okay, so we're cutting all of our mesh at 22 inches. So that'll be the whole roll. Now, <clears throat> If you want, you can cut your mesh and only use half the roll. You absolutely can do that. Um, and I would cut it around, um, well, half of 22, uh, 11 inches. And that way you're only using half the roll. Um, it's not going to be as full as if you used 22 inches. Um, but when a person that is not crafty buys a wreath, they don't really know. If they just look at the wreath and really, really like it, they don't care how much mesh you used or how much florals you used or whatever. They just really like the wreath. <clears throat> so if you can get away with, um, you know, charging a, a good 
amount for the wreath and, and making a good profit, then, you know, why not? So if you want to use half the roll, use half the roll. I think this might be an extra because there's not quite 22 t inches in it. <clears throat> oh my gosh, I'm sorry. My throat is killing me. So I'm just going to put to this to the side because I think, it, like I said, it's an extra. <clears throat> so we got 22 inch pieces. We are going to be using the gray zip ties, which come in the kit. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry. My, my uh, comments are not, they're being a little screwy. So I apologize if I've missed any of your comments. <clears throat> I am going to get the top and the front facing one so I can, <clears throat> my goal is for Facebook to be facing you guys and actually, you know, um, engaging with you well the YouTube one is over tops because people on YouTube want to learn so we'll figure it out but for now if I miss your comments I really truly am sorry <clears throat> okay now ribbons I wanted to we're gonna do like I said 16 pieces and I wanted to have this gorgeous ribbon in every piece so what I've done or I'm going to do is we're going to cut 16 pieces of this sunflower ribbon at 14 inches. All right. And then this solid ribbon, we're only going to cut eight of the solid one. <clears throat> and we're only going to cut eight of um, the tri-colored one. So every zip tie or every, with every piece of mesh, you go, we're going to put in one of the sunflower and either the green or either this one, okay? So I've made packets up. So this one, this pile is just the sunflower and the solid. So there's eight in this packet. And this pile is the sunflower with the tricolor. Okay, so I need to do one, two, three. I need to do four more of the tricolor. Now you are gonna have quite a bit of ribbon left over. You can see we only used eight pieces, so you're gonna have a lot left over, which is great because this color is, it goes with every fall wreath that you can think of, right? So it's really good to have, and this is like kind of a staple color for fall, <clears throat> fall and autumn. Same with this one. So <clears throat> I'd like to give you guys more bang for your buck. So you'll be able to use it for sure again. So I am going to pull my measure buddy out. Now you can use your cutting mat or your ruler to however you need to. <clears throat> you need to cut 16 of these sunflower at 14 inches. So I'm just pulling out arm number one and I think I need four more pieces. So I'm just gonna put the end of my ribbon just up here. I hold it with my finger. Now there is a clip that comes with it. I never use it, but you can slide your ribbon under the clip. And then we got one, two, three, four. So even though we're using 16 pieces of this ribbon, we are only using half the roll. Okay, so there's, we got four pieces now. You can cut the sides right here, or let's just dovetail it right off the get-go. So I'm just going to fold, make sure the ends are the same. Just going to fold this lengthwise, and we're going to cut from the folded edge to the outside corner. Now, the longer you go down, so if I cut right here, my dovetail will be very pointy. If I cut it up closer to the top, my dovetail is not going to be as pointy. Now for this kit, I've done it not as pointy. You can see there's not <clears throat> as much of a long, deep cutted V in there. So I'm going to do them all like that. So it's about a half an inch down. If you measure, put your finger, or your thumb where the half inch is, and then right above your finger, your thumb, put your scissors toward and go towards the outside corner. And then when you open it up, do you see how it's not as deep of a V? 
<clears throat> I want to do that for all my ribbons. So you need to keep that in mind if you want it consistent. So measuring does help. So again, I'll put it on my cutting mat. I'll put my thumb at about half inch onto my ribbon and right above my thumb to the outside corner is where I'm going to cut. And then again, we don't have such a deep V on our dovetails. Hello, everybody. Yes, yeah, see this great green, the moss green. I don't know if it's moss green or fern green. Both are almost the same, the fern and the moss. <clears throat> very, very popular for, because um, it pretty much goes with any ribbon, any fall ribbon out there. All right, so I'm gonna fold these in half. So if you were doing all 16, you would fold all 16 in half. <clears throat> and if you've watched me before, you know I like to prep everything before I start building my wreath. It's just time saving and a lot easier. So with this ribbon, we're gonna need eight pieces, but I've already got four cuts, so we're just gonna do four. So again, at 14 inches, one, two, three, four. Again, we're gonna, I'm gonna remember not to do that deep V because I didn't on the other ones. And I'm only mentioning it because <clears throat> it does kind of make a difference, especially if you are like very meticulous and you love and you're a little OCD and you need to have your ribbon tails exactly looking like each other. Um, to do that, measuring will help you a lot. Okay, so we're folding that over. I'm putting it again, fingernail here, hold on, drive me nuts. There we go. Folding it over, I'm gonna put my finger on the half inch, or my thumb, right above my thumb. Of course, don't cut your thumb. We're going to the outside corner, and we have a nice V. So that all my ribbon tails are going to look pretty much identical. Okay, so we have eight of these. Again, we're gonna fold it up and we're gonna put it inside our little packet. <clears throat> I apologize, guys, my throat is like, feels like it's raw and I'm not sick. It's just, I was laughing so much yesterday. Kind of like when you go to a concert and you're singing away and everything and the next day you lost your voice. That was me yesterday from laughing. <clears throat> and boy, laughter, I'm telling you, is the best medicine. I've been a little stressed lately. And uh, yeah, I've been a little, I'll just leave it there. I've been a little stressed lately. So that laughing that I did yesterday and having such a great time, even though I was, you know, I've been laughing for the past week since we've had my friends and everything come. But um Laughter certainly is the best medicine, I'm telling you, friends. Definitely is. All right. So we got our ribbons all ready to go. So I have my little piles. One set. The other set. Our mesh is cut. Now we're going to put um, cable mounts onto the back of our sign. Now, I probably just, I really like when the sign, when we use the ring board, I like the sign to either go straight across or kind of kitty corner. Some people put it down below with a big bow, or you can put it up higher with a big bow. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do it. But either way, we can decide that at the end. But for sure, we need to put the cable mounts and everything on our sign. So... In the little baggie here, you do get cable mounts. You do get adhesive ruler. And these are great, for, especially if you're um, booking a workshop. So literally, if you buy a kit to do a workshop, there's nothing you have to do. 
they have the ruler, just give them a pair of scissors and they can cut their own mesh. They can, you can just pull up the ruler off the table. Yeah, all they need is scissors. So this is how I started re, um, pretty much where Unique and Creek got started because I used to do a lot of workshops, not just wreathing ones, but I loved, loved doing workshops, meeting all kinds of people. And you know what? People made, there would be like 30 people. That's 30 wreaths I did not have to make. And the smiles on their faces after they've made something at one of my workshops shops, was priceless. Like they just had that, I can't believe I made that moment, right? That is like, that is just what I love. Okay, so our sign is ready to go. I just used the adhesive that is on the cable mount. You may want to use E6000 or hot glue. Um, if you are doing a workshop and you happen to use the cable mount, you can just get them to use the adhesive on the actual cable mount and you could tell them you, they could go home if they want. They are a little hard to pull off because that adhesive is pretty good and it does stick well to the wood. Um, but they can, you know, if their thing pops off down the road because of the heat and stuff, tell them to use like some E6000 or that automotive tape. All right, so I think we're all ready to go. And I'll shut up now and we'll start building this wreath. So we're using the ring board. If you're not familiar with the ring board, there's two holes that are kind of chamfered in or divoted in. Those are our hanging holes, okay? And then there, you'll see a number one and a number two. This I always use as the top of the wreath. So it's a good starting point, especially when teaching. Okay, so we can say, all right, we're gonna start on row one, which we are. All right, I'm gonna use the hole on row one, right where the one is and I'm gonna to use to the outside of the board. Okay, so on row one, we are gonna skip every other row on row one. Okay, so the next zip tie I'm gonna put in is I'm gonna skip here, I'm gonna put one here. Skip here and put one here. So we're gonna start with row one, and then we'll, once we're done those eight, we're gonna start, then go on to row two. Oh, my friends. Hi, everybody. Yeah, too much partying, Donna. You're right. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to use a simple ruffle. It's like my favorite when I'm doing this kind of wreath. Um, you can use a kerfuffle. You can use um, a uh, woodland roll, a woodland ruffle or whatever. Whatever you want to do. I like, I kind of like the, the, this normal um, ruffle because it's a little flatter and I like when the ribbons don't get kind of get lost in the mesh um, so that's why I use the uh, the normal ruffle a lot okay so you're gonna curl curl down factory edges to the left and right of you we're gonna roll that straight out that long 22 inch piece and we're just gonna ruffle right up the center okay and what you're gonna do is you're taking your Peter Pointer and your thumb and you're just gonna pinch it, okay? So you're gonna start right at the bottom and just give it about, I don't know, it looks like about an inch. And then hold on to it with these fingers here, but grab another section and bring it in. Another section, bring it in all the way down the center of this piece of mesh. Okay, so you kind of get this accordion effect in the center here, and that's what we want. We're gonna make a really pretty ruffle. Now, when I get to the end, I try and have the end piece always, the cut edge always facing down towards the table. So I'm gonna take the rest of this and bring it in so that you can see that that cut edge and the beginning cut edge is facing this way. That way, you see these strings? We're not gonna see those strings. You're not gonna have to worry about those strings if you start and finish, 
with the cut edge facing down. Okay, <clears throat> now I don't have my ribbon packet ready yet. Actually, I'll do it for beginners first. So you got 100 zip ties. If you're just a beginner, I highly suggest just do your mesh first and then we're gonna go back and just right over top do um, our ribbon packet, okay? So let me zoom in for you guys. Now you guys all know I, I teach like everybody's a beginner. So don't take offense you uh, experienced ones. Um, but you guys all know how I teach. Okay, so I'm gonna put it right down on the center of the board, or on the board, in between that zip tie and the edge of the board, okay? And then we're gonna come around with it. Now, <clears throat> you're not using the kit, you, and you're just doing a ring board wreath. You absolutely can use pipe cleaners, or PVC stems, or whatever your favorite um, supply is for fixing your, your ribbons and stuff onto your frame. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that my ruffle is about the same size on both ends, which it is. And then I like to, the very last pleat here, I like to kind of push it down towards the board because it then forces the ruffle to go towards the outside and it's gonna give a nice big frame. Okay, and it makes the wreath look a little bit bigger. Well, actually a lot bit, bit, bit bigger. <clears throat> and then people feel like they're getting more bang for their buck, right? Okay, so I put my, I fastened my mesh on. I'm gonna go right over top of that same zip tie. Okay, just keep it open. And we're gonna take one of our packets. So I'm going to start with the um, tricolor. We're just going to lay it in the middle or you can step it if you want. I think for this one I'm just going to lay it in the middle like that. You have your centers lined up and you're going to pinch the bottom towards the center and the top towards the center just like that. And I like to flip it up. So when you're flipping it up you're you're trying to make sure that both sides of your ribbon tails are the same, same length. And then what you can do is just put it right on top of your mesh and then come around with your zip tie again. Okay, before I commit and do it tight, I like to make sure that they're both the same length. They are, pull your zip tie. Now you might wanna push your head of your zip tie just to the back, just a little bit. Although once we get everything on, you can't see the zip ties anyways, but I like to teach it like that anyways. So eventually I am going to separate these ribbon tails and kind of just do it like this. But I'm going to do that after we get everything on. So do it near the end because we're just going to keep doing, fixing our ribbon tails because they'll keep getting messed up as we're as we're putting this together. All right, again, ruffle, pinch, and slide. Okay, you don't want to do this on any kind of a table with a tablecloth or anything. It'll be much harder because you're going to end up gathering the tablecloth underneath into your ruffle. All right, there we go. I'm gonna put it right on where I do that zip tie up. It's not super tight because I wanna, first I want to make sure that both sides are about the same length, and they are. And then I'm gonna take this front pleat, I'm gonna push it down towards the board, and you can see that it automatically moved up that mesh towards the outside. I'm gonna snip it off. I'm gonna put another one just like that. And then this time I'm going to use the solid one and a half. Still with the sunflower ribbon, but this time it's just getting the solid one. Again, line up those center, pinch from the bottom to the center, pinch from the top to the center, flip it up. 
you can kind of see that they're the same size. Put the middle of your ribbon right on the zip tie. Come around. They're both the same size and pull it tight. <clears throat> now this step, you can also, this is where you can also add into this zip tie some florals, some greenery, um, tubing, anything you want to else you want to add you can actually put it into the second zip tie that way you're not gluing it in right um, and then it's not going to um, melt so I really like to make sure that when I'm building a wreath that um, it's secure so it's not just secure with glue it's either wired in zip tied in plus glue okay um, it's just good practice to do that, especially if you sell on Etsy. When you sell on Etsy, you really just don't know where your wreath is going to end up. So you want to make sure that it is well built and you're not going to have customers messaging you because their wreath fell apart because it's 110 degrees outside. All right, so we skip this row. Now this time, if you don't want to use a double zip tie, what you can do is we're going to take our ribbon packet, get it ready. So we're using the tri-color this time. Okay, pinch it, flip it up. It's all ready to go. Then you're going to take your mesh. We're going to ruffle it. Okay, there's our ruffle. I'm gonna put it on the board like we did before. And this time we're gonna then take our ribbon, put it also on top, and then come around with your zip tie. Before we tighten it, let's make sure first we're gonna, I'm gonna push that front pleat down Make sure the ruffle is even. Make sure our ribbons are the same length. And now, once you've figured everything out, now you could, let me snip off a piece here, hold on. <clears throat> we could add, this is where you could add some greeneries and stuff. I do have this piece of, or this thing of eucalyptus. I was gonna use it and then I thought, no, I'll keep it simple. So you can break a little piece off and you can take the end of this piece, kind of, now this, my zip tie is not tight. You can put that end of that piece into the zip tie and then tighten it. So this is just an example of how you can put some greenery or florals or whatever in without literally just gluing it in. All right, and there we go. Okay, now I didn't do it for all of them, so I am just gonna continue. I just wanted to show you how easy it is that you can add, very easily add other stuff to your um, design. Let me try and set up. <clears throat> Just give me a second, guys. I'm going to try and set up. I, the comments, are, I can't see it. I don't like not being able to see the comments. either. Oh, jeez. Okay. Hopefully I can see the comments now. We'll see. Some seem to want to work on my computer here, so.
There we go. Hi, Jack Boot. Okay, let's continue on. Sorry, this is going to take forever if I don't shut up. Let's just keep building. So the next one, we're going to use the solid green. And I pre-ruffled a bunch. Ooh, I love these colors together. And that yellow from the the sunflower really stands out nicely, but not so much that it's totally in your face. not meant to read oh there we go yay I know Claire I love the ribbon colors too very um, um, easy to use because literally it will match pretty much any decor right okay so either way you can do it like I said at the beginning well you can go around do your mesh first Come around and put your ribbon on. And zip ties are like 0 0.001 of a cent, so they're not really expensive. There we go. Or you can do the exact same thing and use pipe cleaners. I like to use zip ties because I find the zip ties keep everything in place a lot better than pipe cleaners, but that's my own personal opinion, so. So for row two, we're gonna do the exact same thing, except we're gonna use the opposite rows that we already used. <laughs> hey use whatever you feel comfortable with because the end result probably will be the same pipe cleaners zip ties they all work out the same I just feel with the zip ties, it's just a little more secure for my liking. And the same with one zip tie, two zip tie. It's all in how comfortable you feel. You know, you may have uh, bad hands and it might be easier, you know, to do the mesh first and then come in with the ribbon. That's why I show both ways all the time. Okay, that one more and we are done this row. Okay, right here. And then we're gonna work on to the next one. So it does go pretty quick when you don't like gab as much as I do.
Anybody have cool plans that they're doing today or anything? I think Dave and I are just going to have a relaxed day. It's been a whirlwind for the past couple of weeks. You're getting used to the zip ties. <laughs> Angie, once you go zip ties, you don't go back. Just saying. <laughs> okay, so we you can separate your ribbon tails now. Um, when you do that, you, you want to keep a pattern. I think it just looks nicer. So the easy way for, in my head to make the pattern for the ribbons is to always like start with my left hand, make sure the sunflower, and then your one and a half, then the sunflower, then the one and a half, and then keep going like that. Sunflower, so you're just kind of separating your ribbon tails. Sunflower, one and a half, sunflower, one and a half. And that way, if you do it like the sunflower and then one and a half, your, um, your one and a half will go over the sunflower one on the neighboring. That makes sense. Okay, but you can do this at the end because we're gonna end up messing this all up anyways again, so. But I just wanted to show you guys while we, you could see what I was doing. You just separate like that. Okay, and it is important to do this step um, because this is what makes your wreath look nice and tidy and uniform and it just looks what much more put together than just having your ribbon tails willy-nilly all over the place right kind of shows that you put some thought into the way uh, your ribbon tails are are on your wreath okay so that is row two doesn't those colors look really pretty together i knew that sunflower ribbon would look nice Okay, so now we're going to go row two. What I'm going to do is we're using every other row again, and we're using the row that's in between the ones we did on row one. Okay, we're going to put a zip tie here. Now, if you want to save on mesh and you're not using your whole roll of mesh, the inner row two, so you could do the outer, um, say you did the outer mesh pieces um, and you're only using the half the roll. Say you did it at four inches or 14 inches for your mesh on row one. Row two, you could use 10 inch pieces of mesh um, and still use the same half roll because the the, the distance between the inner um, rows on row two, the inner columns or whatever, um, they're a lot closer together. So your mesh will be a lot closer together. So what I'm getting at is you don't have to use as much mesh then on row two, if you're trying to save. All right, so you're gonna just do exactly the same. The next one I'll, I'll do is mesh and then I'll put the ribbon over top. So you wanna fold this down, okay? Make sure your ribbon tails are the same length. And then we can pull this tight. And then again, we'll, we'll fix the tails as we're going. So we're skipping this one and we're going to this one. Now, when you're building your wreath, you could build it from the row two to the outside. I always build it from row one to the, to the inside so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. But if you got the knack down pat already, you most definitely, instead of reaching over everything, you most definitely can um, start with row two. For teaching purposes, it's, you know, it doesn't work as well as you'll, you'll miss everything I'm putting on row two. Yes, this kit is still available. There's a few kits still available um, on our site. 
Guys, there is a supply issue problem. I think I've mentioned it a few times. Um, in, you know, with the stuff coming from overseas. I am waiting and waiting, trying to be patient, although there's nothing I could do, for all my kit stuff to come in. My plan when I bought all the kits last year, my plan was to start having Christmas, fall, and Halloween in July, starting in July, because we have a lot, a lot of kits. Well, that's not happening. <laughs> To no fault of anybody. Um, so, unfortunately, when the stuff does come in, it's going to be, you know, bam, bam. We might have to do release like four kits one week, you know, just to get them out. So, yeah. It's not the ideal situation, but... It is what it is, and there's nothing we can do. And I'm not the most patient person in the world, but I'm trying to be. You're gonna weed eat. You're gonna eat the weeds tomorrow, Nina. Oh, I hope they're not poisonous. <laughs> I know I'm stupid. I'm stupid. Looks so pretty. Um, solid. And then we'll add our sign. Um, with this type of design, you don't even need to add a bow. You can add a bow, but you, it, it's not necessary because we got a lot of ribbon tails in here already. Um, so it's a great design if you don't really like making bows or know how to make a bow. <laughs> this is a good uh, design to do this way. Oh, in the VIP group, yeah. Well, that's what I'm talking about, Lynn. So I did post a letter that I received from um, the wholesaler about the shipping issues, so. I'm using my iPad, which I never do. And the comments keep disappearing. Does anybody know why? Does anybody? Because I really don't use my iPad except to run my Mevo. I have to keep tapping it. There's got to be a way where I don't have to. So you can see I'm kind of bringing the ribbon tails up front and moving the mesh as I put each piece in, moving the mesh underneath the ribbon tails. Because, you know, the ribbon is where your money, that's the money right there. The mesh is not so expensive. Ribbon, yes. You want the ribbon to be shown. Yours does it too. There's gotta be a way we can turn that off so it doesn't disappear. See, it disappears like instantly. So if you want, you can just move the neighboring ribbon tail over, put your mesh down, come around. <clears throat> now I'm using the very inner part of the wreath frame. You can use row one and a half to row two. 
You don't have to use the um, hole on row two to the inside of the board. It's just habit for me to um, do it like I'm doing it right now. It is super annoying. Anybody, we got to figure out how to not do that. Crazy, crazy. Um, solid. Of course it drops on the floor. I went this whole time so far with not having anything fall. <laughs> Oh, the U-turn. Oh, the closed captionings. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, it says mine are on already. All right, I don't know, but uh, if I figure it out, or if you guys figure it out, let me know. If I figure it out, I'll let you guys know. Now I have to shut off the volume. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right, let's finish this off, Lord. Again, I'm going to say, if you don't like how I'm doing this wreath, um, the kit this way, you can absolutely do it any way you want, okay? Um, and, like, and you can also add stuff to your wreath kit. I'm just doing the, the basic, because we do have a lot of customers that are first time users. So I try to tend to stay basic as I can, even though there's nothing basic about me, is there? Now this same style, if you do like this style that I'm doing right now, the exact same thing can be done on the uh, oval board as well. So if you have an oval board and you did purchase this kit, but you want to do it like on a larger scale, you do absolutely have enough mesh ribbon and everything to make it larger if you want. Okay. Couple more and we are done. Two more. Yes, it is a kit, Joyce. It is, it is. And I don't know if you guys seen the cute, very cute, I don't even know if there's any last left, the, um, the ghost kit that we just put out. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's so cute. And for all of you snowman fans, now I did release a kit a few weeks back that had the ice blue um, snowman sign and everything. Next week's kit... It's not the same, but it is a snowman. It is a really, really cute kit. So if you love snowmans, you're going to want this one. Um, it's a going to be a plush uh, wreath attachment snowman. 
<clears throat> and uh, it's the sign is about uh, snowball fights. Really cute. I, mean, I can't tell you guys everything about it, but it's a pretty fabulous kit. So that'll be coming out next Wednesday or this Wednesday. All right, last one. And it is the black, white, and ice blue colors. I know, the scarecrow hats. Guys, I've ordered hundreds of them. It's that whole supply chain thing we were just speaking about not too, just a little bit ago. So like if they don't come in, I may be stuck with hundreds of <laughs> scarecrow hats. So. I did in the VIP group though, I did show everybody how to make a really cute, very inexpensive scarecrow hat on your own. And I think it turned out fabulous. So if some of you are looking to do, now in the VIP kit uh, group, we do not do all unique in the creek. We do all kinds of stuff. We do fake bakes, we do um, centerpieces, we do florals, we do all kinds of different frames. Uh, lately, Michelle and I have been doing some amazing sp uh, picks and wreath attachments and you, you get the, um, we give you the templates and fun stuff. So yes, thank you, Tina. We would love to have you guys. Tina did put the link for the group. Um, and I think pretty much anybody that's in our group can vouch that we do have a very good time. So we would love to have you guys. Okay, we are done. I'm gonna get my sign on and then we'll decide. See, what I'm saying is like, we don't, it doesn't really, once we spread all our ribbon tails out, it probably doesn't even need a sign. So, you know, unless, you know, if you're looking to make some you know, less expensive um, products for your Etsy store or your craft booth or wherever. Um, putting, adding a bow onto this will just put extra expense onto this wreath. Um, unless you're just trying to get rid of some ribbon and you don't really care, if you, you know. But the, there's enough ribbon in here that you really don't need a bow. Right? So you can keep it less expensive. You start adding, and you may want to, if you, when you, once you start adding picks and sprays and florals and stuff, your price for your wreath will, you know, start to get higher. Um, so you have to really know your customer and who you're selling to. Um, because, you know, I could stuff this wreath with all kinds of beautiful florals and picks and everything um, very easily like it'll look beautiful however I know in my area here in Niagara Falls my people in Niagara Falls are not going to pay a few may so it, it's good to have a couple high-end um, creations in your store or whatever um, but it's good to have some inexpensive ones so if you have something that everybody can afford. So adding a ribbon or a bow to this, adding all kinds of floral picks and everything, is just gonna jack the price up, which is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. You just gotta be careful of how much product you're putting into your design. And if you put all that product into your design, are you gonna have a hard time selling it? You know, we all see these gorgeous, gorgeous um, pieces that people post in these wreath groups. And they're stunning. And they're stunning and there's a lot of product in them. So when you go to, you know, I like to do that. I go, I'll see a beautiful wreath. I'll go onto their Etsy page just 
to see how much, you know, they're asking. And, you know, kind of get sticker shock when you see four or $500. It's like, <gasps> but it's totally worth it when you put that much product in it. But the average person that is not a crafter really doesn't know how much product can actually price. You know, we have ribbons, designer ribbons out there that are, you know, 70, 80 to a hundred dollars a roll for five yards. And it's really pretty, but you want to make sure that you can sell it, right? <laughs> because if you're in the market to be, you know, making money, having your wreath just sitting around, even though it's absolutely stunning, is not doing you any justice or making any money, right? All right, I'm stunned fooling around with these ribbon tails. Let's put the sign on. What do you guys think? Do you think I should put a bow on? Let me grab the sign that fell, of course, off my table. I'm going to put a hanger on it. Okay, so if I were to put the, the sign right down the middle, which absolutely looks wonderful, right? Everybody loves, this is like a simple, normal design. Put your sign on, you're done. You don't need a bow. There is enough product in there that it looks very full and complete. If you want to put a bow, what you can do is just put your sign a little bit higher. You know, I would angle it so it's not like straight across the top. I would angle it and then you can put a nice fluffy bow kind of directly, diagonally across from the sign. You put a bow down here. I wouldn't, now you could, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a, the sign down near the bottom and put a bow up here because the tails would probably fall over onto the sign. So it's much easier if you're wanting to do a design like that to put your sign up at the top and put your bow at the bottom and let the tails flow. So, but if you're just doing it just like that, it works as well without even using a bow. I know, isn't the sign pretty? I love, look how nice this is without the sunflowers totally being right in your face. It's just very, I don't know. I just loved it. when I seen it. It's like, oh my gosh, this would be perfect ribbons together. It's simple. I love this wreath too. I really do. You know what? We can, I showed you guys, we can put the sign right there and be done. So, that is easy to do. You guys can stop right there or let's continue on in case somebody wants to make a bow or wants to do the sign up there. Let's do the bow. So first thing I'm going to do before I do all that is I'm going to put a zip tie in the back. We're going to use the two holes. You're going to take your zip tie, go down the one hole and then you push it back up the other. Oh, so I'm just kind of working inside the wreath here. All right, and then we're gonna zip it until you hear that zip sound and then cut the tail off. And that way we have our hanger. Now I do want the bow at the top, or not bow, sorry, the sign more at the top. So I'm probably gonna kitty corner it like that. So I'll probably use these holes right here. So this is the center. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, like that. Or actually, no, I'm gonna do one, two, three, three from the center. So here's the center, one, two, three. I'll put that one here and then one, two, three, four, five. That's what I'm gonna do. 
So three from the center for the one side and five row, rows from the center for the other side and we'll have a nice angled sign and then we're gonna put a bow right here, of course, on the other side. Okay, so three. One, two, three, so my, right here is this side going to go in and I'm just going to kind of separate the, the mesh here and you'll be able to see the holes no problem. And I'll flip it over so you guys can see where I went. Now my pipe cleaners keep bending on me, okay. So once you get it through the holes, just give it a little twist. Don't pull it tight because we need to get the other side in. Okay, so I'm going to give it a light twist. I love the... Oh, you definitely... This, is, this style is definitely... Like, this sign matches pretty much anything. But I figured since fall was coming, I'd use a little bit of more fall autumn colors for it. All right, and then on this side, we're going one, two, three, four, five. So right about. One, two, three, four, five, right about here. There we go. Now we can tighten it. You want to make sure your ribbons are not stuck, your tails are not stuck under the sign. Now I don't want to squish it down. I don't want to pull it super tight. And you can see how the ribbons are kind of squishing down. I'm just pulling it. I feel some resistance because it's hit the mesh and I'm going to twist it in the back. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Make sure your ribbon tails are up and not stuck under your sign. Again, I'm going to pull this down a bit. I feel the resistance and twist. Now you can zip tie this string to the uh, wreath board as well for another secure um, a security thing so you're not, you know, if you were gluing something, it's not going to fall off because you actually zip tied the sign with the twine there, but <clears throat> I just cut it off. Okay, let's flip it over. So there's the center. One, two, three, I went for the right, and then one, two, three, four, five to the left. That is an easy way to make sure you put your sign exactly the way where you want it. It's just cut counting. So super easy way to do it. Um, then once your, your sign is done, you can then cut the excess and put it down the holes. And keeping the nice the back nice and neat. All right, there we go. Now you can, after you're done and everything is, you know, is in place, what you also can do is you can put a little bit of hot glue, just a little bit on each side and kind of press it down. And that make, will also make sure that the sign stays right exactly where you want it. But we're going to do, so it's catty corner, kitty corner, whatever you want in this area right here is we're going to, we're going to put a bow. Okay. So, my gosh, it's pretty. I am going to use my bow maker. Oh, I got a, we got more in stock. I have to put them up on the website. <clears throat> so I'm going to do, I think I'm going to have the sunflower ribbon in the middle. I'm going to do a monkey's creations bow. I'm going to have the tricolor think on the top and then just the solid on the bottom. 
No, actually, I'm going to do vice versa. I want the sunflower ribbon to be seen in the bow. So I'm going to put this one on the bottom and put the solid green for the top. Okay. Coffee done. Now it's buble time. Okay. So we're going to use this tricolor first. I'm going to make the tail 14 inches. Give it a half twist. And I'm going to do three loops at six inches. So you're going to slide your ribbon down, give it a half twist. There's the tail at six inch, or the loop is at six inches here. That our, the bad side is facing up, and that's why you do that half twist. We're going to go down, half twist. There's one on each side. We're going to do three. One, two, three, three. Now this is the last loop. I don't have to flip it. I don't do the half twist because we are done. We're just gonna cut our tail. Thank you, Beautimus. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with my two and a half. So it's going in the middle. So again, I'm gonna do the 14 inch tail half twist and with this one I'm going to do it at five inches and two loops so those two loops that I'm going to do are going to go in between so one here and one here it's going to go in between the three there and it's going to be five inches Oh, like right in there. So you can build your bow as you're going. have to half twist this last one because we are finished with those loops. Okay, cut this off. And now we're going to come in with just this solid, the solid uh, green. So that goes there. This one goes here. I'm just putting those two loops in the in between the three. And then we're our last one. And it's going to be four inches with one loop. So this loop is going to go in between these two sunflower ones at like four inches. One. And I'm going to come around. I'm going to put a little like knot in the middle or in the center, which when you just take your ribbon, go around the fingers and then come back down. And then we're going to finish off the, t the second tail here. And that gives us a little like cute little knot in the center of our bow. Okay, so our bow is done. Now I'm going to take my a zip tie and my last pipe cleaner that I got in the kit.
like any hobby, we want it all. Okay, and I'm going to slide this off carefully. Now, people do a million different ways. Everybody makes bows different ways. This just works for me this way. I bring a zip tie underneath. Now, because I put that little center knot in, I'm going to put my zip tie through that center here. Then, do the zip tie up. You're working on this kit now? Are you doing it the same as I am doing it? That would be interesting. All right, I'm gonna take this zip tie head, bring it to the back, and I like to slide my pipe cleaner. And then and this is how I attach it. Um, you can just use the pipe cleaner and twist it around the center of your bow. Again, it's whatever you prefer, whatever you feel comfortable. And then we're going to attach it and we'll be done. It should have been done about a half an hour ago, but <laughs> it is what it is. All right, so there's our really pretty bow. So we'll just pull out before we even attach it. Okay, loops, loops. the center right down the center I like the little knot in the center here I think it looks pretty there we go now we're gonna just put it just over here in this corner here so it is kitty corner where's my center right here so I'm thinking my bow should go right about right in here and we'll nestle it in right there just going to take my pipe cleaners and kind of move. Sometimes I go th right through the mesh, which is nice because the if you go right through the mesh with your pipe cleaners, the it has a nice base for the bow to sit up, so it does won't get sunk uh, sunk into your wreath. All right, there's the one. So I'm sorry I can't show you this part because I'm like digging down through everything, but that is what I'm doing. I am just kind of went through the mesh and going through this one hole. And then I'll do the same for the other bow, uh, the other side of the pipe cleaner. Okay, move one. Now you can just move the mesh and just go right straight down, which is what I normally do. But I found that, like I said, going, putting the pipe cleaners kind of through the mesh, it, it really makes a difference um, for your bow because it has something to sit on. back where they were and then bring that bow up so it's going to be when I pull it straight down it's sitting so even if I pull it really super tight it still can't get sunk into your wreath because uh, we put the pipe cleaners through everything so it's got that base to sit on okay but I just kind of pull, I feel that it's starting to have some resistance and I'll twist on the back. Okay, so there we are. There's the center. So I kind of went over two. Two from the center, two rows. And then we'll, again, we want to keep it nice and neat. There we go. And the fun part, fluffing everything. Now I do like when I when I do some a design like this, I do like to have some of the bow loops kind of sitting up near the sign. 
like overlap, overlapping it like that. And you're going to grab your loops and you want to make sure you open them. So get that hand in there and open up those loops. And I usually start from the back of the bow. So you can push these forward if you want. Make sure your tails. And this is the very first row of my bow. There's the three. Let's bring these up. Get that open. Okay, so there's the three loops of the tricolor. Now we're going to do the sunflower one. And it's going in between those three loops, right in the center. Okay, and then the single loop is just in the center like this. Very easy both. Uh, six five four three two one. That's how you can remember it. That's Michelle's um, recipe. All right, and then we're gonna make our little loopy thing in the center here, pretty. All righty. I actually really like the bow. And now we're gonna just like to dovetail the. The ends, you can do your end however you want, like your tails from your bow. Some people just fold the edges up, just like that. Some people dovetail, you can curl it, but we'll start at the back. I'm just gonna dovetail it quickly. This one, I'm just gonna curl them. I like to take, get your scissor fingers and this is, all of this is really good wire, or ribbon with a good wire in it. So you can see, you just do that and it gives it a nice, nice curl. So don't keep your ribbon, your tails of your bow, don't keep them straight out. Give them a little bit of a curl or something. And I'm gonna do the same with this one. Now I know Michelle likes to curl hers all up. You can do that as well. I'll do that with the, the last ribbon. Look how pretty that is. Loving these colors that are put together. So pretty. And then these ones I'm going to dovetail and I'll, I'll curl. And to do that, you just take the end and we're going to kind of roll it. You can see you're going to roll it with the, the edge going towards the inside of it. Then take the end where the corner is and just kind of bring it down. And you can see that makes that nice little piggy curl on it. And then we're going to do the same. So this one's going to go this way as you roll it. Okay, and then again, you're gonna grab the end and you're just going to loosely, you don't wanna pull it tight because you'll just straighten them again. And then that's, that's it. And then of course we'll fix everything once it's on the door. Fix all my tails and everything. And there we go. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. Very pretty fall, everyday home wreath. There we go. Isn't it pretty? I love, love, love the colors. Love it. Love, love, love it. Zhuzh, right, Lynn? That's our, we have a secret language in Can-Am group. We, we literally have secret, secret language. <laughs> you have to get a dictionary when you join, not get the VIP dictionary when you join the group. 
<laughs> it's a lot of fun. Anyways, there you go. That is in the, the wreath I believe is, the kit is fairly inexpensive. Um, I try to keep everything you can, like I said at the, at the beginning, you can add all kinds of other stuff to it. When you add other stuff, you got to take into account, you know, you want to make sure you're going to be able to get your money back if you're making it for, for, um, profit. If not stuff, if you're making it for a friend or a gift, stuff it all. But sometimes, especially a wreath like this, where it's got, you know, gorgeous ribbons, you know, you may not want to stuff it. You may want that ribbon to be the, the, the showcase. Um, and I think with this one, I'm really kind of glad I didn't add all kinds of greenery because I love I love just how it looks now. There's enough green in it uh, just from the ribbon tails without having to add more product. So, but the, like I said, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I know VIP group is awesome. And that's it. That's all I got for you guys today. I know I was a little longer, but I was trying to explain everything. And yeah, I love to gab. You all know that. So. Anyways, very pretty. I will take a picture on my, this will look fabulous on my new colored door, right? If you haven't seen my new colored door, it's like a dark brown antique. Oh my God, it's going to look stunning. It is a real word, right? Zhuzh. <laughs> Sticky outy things. <laughs> oh God. We're for real in that group, I'm telling you. Some of the topics that we come up with, holy man, will blow your mind. Anyways, thanks, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, if I'm feeling good, I might come back on and get caught up with everything. I just may come on and do the... Um, oh, and there's the side view. So you can see it's still very flat. It definitely will fit in between two doors which is a big thing these days. So, and shipping. Unique in the Creek wreaths are a lot less expensive to ship than these big ginormous, you know, work frame wreaths and stuff. So, and it's professional looking. So of course you're going to put your business card or a sticker or something on the back on your frame so that the person that bought it is gonna be able to find you uh, to purchase a Christmas one. Good marketing tactic. So that's that one, but I do have this kit that I still have to do. I did show it the other day. I might just pop on a little later because I'm excited to do it. Look at this. This, I think there's a few still available. This is going to be super fun. Look at that. And we're gonna use pipe cleaners. We're not even gonna use zip ties. We're gonna use pipe cleaners just for Jackie B. And it's on oval. So it's gonna be pretty big. I'm thinking I'm gonna put the ghost here in my boo sign, kind of like that. I think it'll look fabulous. What do you guys think? Anyways, make sure you've signed up for the broadcast channel. I will send out a live if I do decide to do that. We'll see how my back is doing. Um, if not, it'll be sometime this week, if not tomorrow. All right, everybody, again, thanks for joining me and have yourselves a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, everybody.